Hey everybody, I'm Kayla with Galliano Realty and this is My Big Easy Home where I share all of the best things about New Orleans with you. And today I am in the Lower Garden District at Bella Umbrella with Miss Jodell Eckbert, the owner of the shop here. Um, and there is no better time to talk about umbrellas than right now because <laughs> we have had a rainy spring, a rainy summer, it's raining right now. Like if you don't have an umbrella, what you doing? Boo, you gotta get it, right? Okay. You gotta get a pretty umbrella. And you gotta get a pretty get a umbrella, umbrella and a strong, very mm -hmm. important, mm -hmm. strong umbrella. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many umbrellas I have had to throw away because the wind here just flips them inside out and they're not durable enough to take our weather, basically, you know? So sturdy umbrella, very, very important. Um, so why don't you tell everybody what products and services Bella Umbrella, Bella Umbrella provides? Well, I am one of the last umbrella shops in the country and one of the last umbrella makers. And so I've had this business for 20 years. So I've been through uh, a lot of different variations of this type of retail. I started out by collecting vintage umbrellas from the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, and it it got out of hand and so I had to come up with a business <laughs> so I started a website and started renting them out to brides all over the country yeah. and I did that out of my home up in Seattle for about six years and then I started designing my own line so from that I, I did all of the big retail shows started putting my umbrellas in retail uh, gift shops and department stores and then uh, in 2009 the economy went down and so also did the, the the retail things so and it was such a great opportunity to get uh, retail property for you know yeah a, a dream and so that's when I started opening up stores my store here in New Orleans is my fourth store I had three oh, up wow. in Seattle and so I do rental manufacturing, custom, and brick and mortar. Okay. So I do, uh, I, I bring in umbrellas, mostly ones that you can't find on Amazon. They're from makers from around the world. There's a handful of us who still make umbrellas. And so that's what I try to specialize in. Yeah. So how long have you been in New Orleans? Uh, April 14, so seven years. Seven years, okay. Mm -hmm. And, so you got started in umbrellas because you had this hobby and this passion that you had to then find a way to support <laughs> and justify, which we all do um, from time to time. Um, but how did you start to make your own umbrellas? Well, it was from renting out the umbrellas, the vintage ones. Sometimes I'd rent out, you know, 25 to 100 at a time. And sometimes they'd come back. I mean, these are really well-made umbrellas from, they're the real thing from the 1930s, 40s. But yeah. sometimes they'd come back with a handle or a rib or something that I needed to fix. So yeah. you take something apart so many times and then put it back together. And an interesting part of this is I had this gentleman one day, uh, he was from Brooklyn, New York. His name was Gilbert Center. And he used to uh, work for uh, Uncle Sam's Umbrellas in New York and he's like 83 years old and he emails me he says hey Jodell this is uh, Gilbert Center from Brooklyn New York I want to help you with your umbrella business did he find you online how did he, he found, even know he found okay my website okay and he saw that I had all the vintage umbrellas and so one of the things that when I started collecting these umbrellas, I would always look inside and I'd look at the little tag. I always wanted to know who made these. So anyways, we got on the phone and turns out that, it, so his father came over from Poland in the 1920s and started an umbrella business there. And so the umbrella business was his life. I'm like, oh, one of my favorite umbrella makers was Flammer Clog from New York. He goes, oh yeah. We used to have them over for cocktails. I was like, oh my gosh, I wow. <laughs> love. Like so, iconic in the umbrella world, yeah. he was. Yeah. And so I flew out to New York and spent some time with him. And he was the, you know, he showed me a shop. Oh my God. It was like, a, it was, it was the best. We were kindred spirits and um, 
it, 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 he showed me a lot of the little things that I didn't couldn't figure out and so he was the first one that helped me do make my own umbrella for Sex in the City which was my very first you know big production that I did oh and so you have an umbrella in Sex in the City what what mm -hmm. what episode what was it the movie well or, it was the movie okay and it was where it was my first pagoda and then that's I when yeah. I started making my own line and Gilbert helped me find you know he connected me with the person who would help me develop my line I designed the line um, I got the patent I got a couple trademarks and he was the introduction to me making my own line Wow that's so cool now I want to go back and watch sex in the city mm -hmm. and find this umbrella well I got to show it to you here in a little bit okay um yeah, my, my mom owned a retail store. She owned a gift shop for over 20 years. And um, watching her, I really, I really got a sense of how much hard work and dedication and flexibility it takes really for any business to persevere year after year. I think retail has its own unique dynamics and challenges. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering for you, um, you know, what advice would you give or what have been your biggest lessons in the course of your time in retail? Yeah, so uh, through the years of going through different uh, you know, levels of this, when I started doing my own line or opening up stores, open, or starting a, a business plan was so informative. It gave me uh, insight into the industry. It, made me have goals and uh, it taught me so much because so much so many times when you're starting a retail store or a business you have these ideas of what it is and there's so much more to it yeah and when and then that was a huge uh, piece for me you have to learn how to do every portion of your business you have to know how to do the bookkeeping the I mean we well we all just want to be artists and show off our right. our beautiful yeah. things but there's a lot that you need to learn about it. And so that would be number one. Number two, when you said flexibility, like if you're going to, uh, you have to be flexible and keep those creative ideas going because that's what helps you grow. Um, and you have to kind of start to know your customer and be able do. to anticipate what they want. Like yeah. you can't always just, get the things you like and the things you want you have to think about other people well, you have to you have to realize what makes money right and while keeping your and this is a big thing too and it's the passion of it like there's so much of this that can get overwhelming sometimes and um but passion has gotten me through so much and you know don't be afraid to reinvent yourself and get that thought you know if you're artistic you you have the ability to like re imagine your own business and sometimes it, it, it really yeah. um, can be something more than you even thought it was. I think that scares people because they're like if I change then the people who are my customers aren't going to come anymore well, but it's like but you're going to open yourself up to a whole different world of yeah. potential customer you really have to do sort of what you feel is is the best Well, you got to stay true to yourself and being true to myself I could have um, kept on buying from China, but what I it came to a point where I couldn't buy from China anymore. So that forced me to start hand making my line of umbrellas. So I started resourcing fabrics. I started looking at people who you know to make the frames, which was the hardest part. So I'm like talking with metal workers of how can I start pressing these thing, you know, these ribs and. Uh, having jewelry makers uh, and and myself design handles because part of my line the thing I got the patent on was I'm the only umbrella company in the world who has interchangeable handles these are so cool we're gonna show you these later but I love this idea <laughs> so I can I, I can have an artist series of handles because they just screw on and off the canopy is one design and then I can do whatever, I can do new colors of fabric, new handles, and and that's what has afforded me, especially through this last pandemic, the pandemic, is that I had a following of people who wanted to collect. I turned my customers into me. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know, nice. collectors. I love that. Yeah. So every year I would come out with new colors and new handle designs. And so people who had either canopies or they wanted to add something new, they could. So yeah. during the pandemic, it was, um, it, 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 it was interesting, but I was able to start helping other artists with me and do that. And I also came up with, well, we'll get into that, but okay. uh, I came up with something <laughs> called the Generations Parasol. Since we had no tourism okay. and we had no uh, weddings happening for a year, yeah. and a lot of my business is weddings, I started having, um, I have all these old frames. So I'd have my brides send me either their mom's or their grandmother's wedding dresses. I'd disassemble them and then recreate a parasol on a oh, vintage umbrella frame. That's so beautiful. Since they weren't making, they weren't spending a lot of money on yeah. weddings. Um, they were able to put money into more. So that, I mean, just that yeah. time. Time, uh, as long as long as you have the passion and the time, uh, things will come. Yeah. I, I never thought about that. Yeah, um, now that's what a, of, that's a way a to preserve thing. something sentimental. Something of family value, mm -hmm. something that's probably not going to get used again. Everybody, we all know somebody who has that wedding dress, or even ourselves. Yeah, you know, have a wedding dress up in the closet. Girl, I never even got married to have a wedding dress <laughs> I, sitting I, in the closet somewhere. I have people say, "I got the wedding dress. I just need the man." Right. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, so you know, that's about the business. It's it, it it's it's a beautiful thing if 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 it you know it truly is something you're supposed to be doing. I, um, I wonder, because I, I think when you're personalizing things for people, that really opens the door for some very unique mm -hmm. kind of experiences. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if there is any customer, any umbrella, like any, any experience that you've had with a customer or with a request mm. that is unique or fun, like stands out to you in any kind of way. Well, I, 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 I tell my story pretty much every day. Anybody who will listen, I start showing them, telling them, and yeah. then you can see the, the the wheels working in their head and you know I, I don't know that there's any one in particular but one does stand out you know um, uh, a gentleman who's on the crew of Zulu he brought in this piece of fabric from um, Cambodia and he wanted me to make it uh, make an umbrella out of it for him I also have another guy so cute he's been a Saints fan all of his he has like the box and he had an umbrella that was signed by Fats Domino. I mean, everybody, he, it's been 20 years. So wow. I took that canopy off and made it into a new umbrella form. It's, it's those kind of stories. It's like the, the his, people, people have a, a nostalgia for Absolutely. their umbrellas. And so I, I would say those two really stand out. I also, um, you know, there. I had a customer in here recently, and um, I, a lot of my vintage collection. There's a there's a category called double layered, and one of the umbrellas is from the movie um, Umbrellas of Chambord with Catherine Deneuve. Okay. And she actually knew Catherine Deneuve. And oh so wow! That was pretty cool. That is cool. Random. And I don't know. There's. I, I did something for the Talking Heads. I did something. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I love I, the Talking Heads. Uh, Kristen Dunn. I mean, I've done. Anyways. Yeah, you've done a lot of a lot of a lot of cool stuff. Cool I did stuff. American Horror Story, uh, Coven. I did um, recently Bridgerton. Have you seen Bridgerton? <gasps> yes, I love Bridgerton. I did all the umbrellas for that. Right. Okay. Now I got to go back and watch Bridgerton again. I know. I'm so it's excited. All front, it's, all, it's all the 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 entry scene, and then throughout you'll see my actual pink pagoda, like be, behind uh, when her and the Duke are out having the picnic. It's yeah. like my pagoda in the back there. So I get to do I, love a lot. I get to do so many fun things for yeah. really incredible people. That sounds amazing. Yeah. I love that. Um, do you want to show me around? I'd love to. Tell me where we are and what I'm looking at. Well, we're in the back room okay. of Bell Umbrella, and I wanted to start here because this is pretty much where it all started. This is the Vintage Umbrella Collection, and um, I have probably about a 1,000, and I have about 500 out on orders because I do do this nationally. So, and they're all in different categories, but I want to show you, so these are, these are classic, solids with really cool handles. Oh wow, that's cool. Isn't that fun? Yeah. And then this is from Italy. 
Oh, that's beautiful. Like that. Craftsmanship. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. These are all original condition. Look at it. Oh, oh, some bling. Yeah. This is one of my kind of understated favorites, but. Oh, I like that. Pretty. Yeah, that's really And then pretty. everything here is, are the pagoda shaped umbrellas. So, pagoda pretty much started like in 1700s, but then it had a resurgence in the 1940s and 50s. Yes. So Pagoda is the shape. Okay. And um, it, it's what I based my umbrella line off of. Um, this is the one that was in Bridgerton. So everything down here, these are projects that I'm working on. And, uh, but this is my umbrella, the, this is the one, actually, so Sex in the City, this I did this umbrella, but it, it was a hot pink one. This one's Bridgerton, which you'll and then see how it has the screw here? Yeah. So I design handles. This is one that I carved myself. I have the scar to show it. You but carved I, that? I carved out of what? Wood? Out of jeweler's wax. Wow. And then I had a mold made. So all my handles screw on and off. But here's so my husband's a furniture maker. And so he does this on his lathe and has a nice little gemstone. Yeah, my the one so, I have on I have yeah. a pagoda umbrella. Uh -huh, and it has that kind of handle yeah. on it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is where it becomes collectible. You can put any of the handle colors on it. You can mix and match. So that's the pagoda. And just going back to the three stores that I had up in Seattle, my husband and I went out on a journey, we moved here to New Orleans. New Orleans had been calling my name for a very long time. It was something, there's a magic down here. She does but, that, she picks her people and she brings them here, that's what I always think, yeah. But there's a whole secondary umbrella business here with second lining. And if you're not familiar with what second lining is, if you've probably seen it on TV where there's the brass band going down the street and then there is a procession behind them. And sometimes it's a funeral, sometimes it's a wedding. It's generally a celebration of life. Sometimes and it's a random corporate convention event who gets a permit for a second line. <laughs> yes, but it's a big. We really expanded down the concept of second line here. Yeah, in recent absolutely. Years. Uh, you know, Bowie or Prince. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, but you know, umbrellas are a huge part of that. A yeah. very big part of it. And when I was telling you about the gentleman from Zulu, so the king of Zulu came in with his umbrella maker. And I love telling this story because he and I, we just went, boom, and I said, tell me about second lining. And he goes, well, the number one thing about your umbrella and second lining, you gotta have either feathers or fringe because that's where the spirit is. Oh. And so I tell that to people. So some of my vintage umbrellas, I, I, I edit. So this is from the 1950s, very Marilyn Monroe, and it has the matching little tip. Oh, that's so cool. But I added these ostrich feathers to it, and so I rent that is super fun. second lining umbrellas. A lot of times people will come down here from all over, and they don't want to have to, you know, um, transport or keep and a second line umbrella. Yeah. So I rent these for $25 a piece for a five day period. So you can't, and that's all of these. It doesn't matter which one it is. You, you can pick it up on Thursday and bring it back. Also just on the rentals, I do this nationally. So I ship out umbrellas. I include a prepaid shipping slip. So you just keep the box and the uh, packing material. The ghosts of New Orleans. I know. There's a lot of them around here. And then you just ship them back. So it's kind of a nice way to incorporate umbrellas into, I do a lot of baby showers and bridal showers. You can hang them from the trees. I want to show you, this is my favorite one out of the collection. So Ooh, I, I don't know if you can see this. that scallop edge is so pretty. But this was made in the 1960s <gasps> in Paris. Oh, I don't know if you can see It looks see that very color. Parisian. But I love bridal, that. It's a beautiful color too. You can, you know, yeah. bridal photos and stuff like that. I love that the color is on gorgeous. This one. Open that up again. I want to see. Yeah, that like that. Yeah, and it's double layered it's with so a little pretty. scallop. I love There's it. a whole bunch of uh, this one here. This is another double layered. But look at how they used to put the gemstones in the yeah. tips. So we can put together pretty much a collection of any color scheme you have. If you want to do 
purples and oranges. I, I can I can pretty much come up with anything that you like. Yeah. So that's I how it. it all started. Okay. And it pretty much covered the the ones that I make and that. So let me show you the generations parasol. Okay. So tell me where we are now. Okay. Now we're in where I make things. Okay. Um, got my little Janome. It's just a little workhorse. But this is where I fix things, redo things. I got my little, you know, my little stand. But here's some fabric that I cut out. This is going to be the next pagoda that we're going to put together. And, um, but the Generations parasol, this is um, one of them that a gal sent me her grandmother's wedding dress. Wow. So I took it apart, cleaned it, reorganized it, and I put it on this frame. Check out this oh, frame. This is from wow. 1899. That's so pretty. And when I was taking it apart, I found this little tag inside that says 1899 on it. So I left that in there for her. And I still have some beading to do on the outside. But I work with the customer as they give me the dress. We pick out the handles, we pick out the frame. This is a large uh, example. We could do any different thing. But it's just a beautiful way of preserving yeah. that. That and what a period. great something old yeah, for so a wedding if you were looking for something to, you know, to fill that, yeah. something borrowed, something new, whatever the, something, well, how's it go? You something should know Something borrowed, something blue, some, no, thing something old, old and something old new. And new. There yeah. you go. <laughs> and then if we want to come out this way, one of these, this is where I have a lot of the old frames that we choose from. So some of these, like that, these are, these this particular style was made in New York. This is 18 karat gold and mother of pearl. And then this is another favorite. Oh, wow, that's really cool. Yeah. So where do you find all of? All of my stuff? Well, yeah. I, uh, I can't tell you. That. OK. No, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Proprietary information. Yeah, I understand. I've been collecting for so long that I have um, I'm kind of the umbrella lady. And so there's a lot of people who do estate sales. And okay. so they know that um, that I collect, and then also um, involved with Antiques Roadshow for okay. dating things. Since I've been doing it so long, I kind of yeah. know all of the makers, and so people I, I find them on internet. But some of these were in the rental collection and okay. didn't make it back in all one piece. Gotcha. And then down here we have a bunch of fabrics that you can choose from. Definitely. But you can also bring me your I mean, own fabric. I feel and like we've there. gotten so boring and mundane with the whole idea of like what an umbrella can be. It's not just functional. It, it's art. And it can be a statement piece for your your outfit too. I Absolutely. love that. I mean, in the 19th... Oh, this box one is neat. Oh, and how about my little... Oh skull. yeah, you have to have a skull in New Orleans. That's <laughs> and then some of these canes have swords in them. So like this one here. What? So this one has a, a dagger up here. Yeah. And then there is a sword down here. There's a few different. Uh, I have a couple. I have a lot of people saying, "Oh, do you have one that you know has a gun?" And I'm like, I'm working on it. With <laughs> <laughs> but as a as somebody who makes this stuff, I am so into making you know personal things. I wouldn't sell that because you have to have a whole different license for it. But yeah. Anyways, um, this is the this is my little brick and mortar. It's so fun. It, it has a little bit of everything in it. It's so New Orleans, and th I don't know of another city in this country where I could contribute to the texture, the feeling. And the culture. And the culture. I mean, being yeah. a part of all of those second lines and locals coming in with things that are special to them or historic to them. Yeah. Like that's, you're, you're a part of the culture at that point. And they've really accepted me here. It, it's like they've been, uh, the community has really embraced my business, and especially here on Magazine Street, where we have such an amazing uh, uh, mixture of, uh, of people who specialize in things, and it's one of the most uh, iconic 
streets, yeah, retail streets in the country. It is, yeah. and it's one of the. If you can make it out of the quarter, you lucked out and got a good spot. That's a whole other story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, it, no it, doubt, I, when I was up in Seattle, I was just get, Pinterest had just come on, and I did a whole New Orleans board, and I remember pinning pe- pe- uh, pictures, and I was like, "How do I get there? How do I get there?" And I came down, and I had a real estate agent, and she took me out and showed me a bunch of places, and all oh, those weren't quite right, but we were headed back down to the quarter. And I saw a little for rent sign here, and I said, "That's it." And it turns out I go back to my Pinterest board, and, and it, it was, was on your board. It. So, you know, I was driving around before I moved here. I was driving around in my neighborhood, and it was the first time I live up um, mid city, Bayou Saint John kind of area, and I had never been to that part of the city before. Um, it was my first time there. I was driving around on my street, and I said, "This is where I want to be, right here." And then when it came time to get something, sure enough, there was something open. And there weren't things that were opening up very frequently in that area at that time. So yeah. it's crazy the way that works. It's funny how things, you know, you know you're supposed to be there. Yeah. yeah. I, I knew I was supposed to be here. Yeah. I love it. Jodell, thank you so much. Let's go back and sit down and just kind of wrap it up. And Okay. So you mentioned... Um, the generational umbrellas were something that was new. Anything else new coming up for Bella Umbrella? Oh, gosh, if I had a big bag of money, I got, yeah. I got all kinds of ideas. Wouldn't we all? Huh? Yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah. kind of getting back on my feet. And um, but I have I have a personal collection of umbrellas. That there's a couple that I would like to, you know, make, but I. I would love, uh, one thing that's always been on my mind that I'd love to create is uh, an artist co-op here in New Orleans. I like this. And that Tell would be uh, where we would be in a space where there would be a, a woodworker, a, furni- uh, a jewelry maker. I want to get one of those um, machines that you can print on any kind of fabric. fabric. Yes. So all of us would bring in um, jobs. I mean, that's where I... St- because I'm not going to be doing Bella, Bella Umbrella forever. I'm also right. looking for an apprentice. Um, I, I need to I need to share all this with somebody. Yeah, and I absolutely. Want it to go on. I and feel like there are a lot of arts here. You know, woodworking and plaster work and mm. iron work mm. and and crafting umbrella. Like mm. all of these arts are mm. fading. I know. Because people, I think it's really a, an unusual thing when people want to dedicate their life to le- perfecting an art. Mm-hmm. And you do, if you're going to be a great artist at mm-hmm. a, something that you're building like this, you have mm-hmm. to learn, and that takes time. And, mm-hmm. you know, so anybody who wants to learn how to make umbrellas, yeah. hit her up. And if you are an investor, and yeah. you, or you have a space, and you like this artist co op idea, mm-hmm. then I will hook you guys up. I just keep on putting it out there. I know that the time and the person and the opportunity will present itself right when it's supposed to. Yeah. Yeah. That's how life is. Mm -hmm. Works out like that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, Tell everybody where they can find you on the internet, social media. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, bellaumbrella.com. And when you go to bellaumbrella.com, you either go, the landing page is Rent Bella or Shop Bella. So rental or here. But whenever I'm making a new Generations parasol or in a new uh, movie or something, I put it on Instagram. And on Instagram, we're Bella Umbrella with an S. So Bella Umbrellas. Okay. And that's the same on Facebook as well. So okay. we're Facebook, Instagram, Bella Umbrellas. And if you want to stalk us. Awesome. Yes. And see what we're up to. And if they want to contact you for any reason, what's the best mm-hmm. way to do that? Uh, Jodell at bellaumbrella.com, but easy enough on any of those platforms you can get to me. I'm the only one here right okay. now. You're a one woman show. I am a That's one-woman impressive. Show. Yeah. But it's you know I used to have a kind of a, a a good group of people, but I've narrowed it. You know I've I've. Anyways, you'll be talking to me. Right. If, 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 you, if, you, if you talk to yeah. any she of She is uh, the point of the funnel. Everything goes to her. That's awesome. Yeah. And um, hopefully we'll get, we'll get somebody 
who yeah. want to apprentice, and then and yeah. then you can teach somebody all of the wonderful things that you've learned yeah. over the years. So. Yeah. Thank you so much for mm -hmm. taking this time and carving out a little space mm -hmm. and keeping mm -hmm. the, the clothes sign mm -hmm. on just a little bit later today yep. so that um, we could do this. I, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kayla. All right. It was a pleasure. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So that was uh, Joe Dell Egbert with Bella Umbrella here on Magazine Street in the Lower Garden District. Hit her up. And if you have any questions about real estate in New Orleans, buy, mm -hmm. sell, lease, then hit me up. You can comment or message me wherever you find this video. Y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.